Hi everyone, you're here, maybe because your heating system isn't working properly, you've found a few radiators aren't working, or you've had some work done and it's just not working quite right. The radiators aren't getting as hot as they were. Adam, who lives in this house here behind me, rung me up because he's got this exact problem. He's had multiple plumbers come out and have a look at this, and there's a few stories that he wants to tell me about what's been going on here. Then we're gonna have a look around the house and see if we can get his system working. So without further ado, let's go inside and see what's going on. Hold tight. I already, already like Adam as a customer. He's getting the coffees and teas out before we can sit down and get comfortable. Right, so I'm here with Adam, this unfortunate homeowner. He's had a lot of trouble with his heating system. Adam, just give us a run over of what's been going on. Yeah, sure, James. So we had a um, new boiler fitted um, 2022. Ever since we had it installed, the uh, radiators don't work as efficiently as they used to. And that's all radiators or just downstairs, no. just upstairs? So it's, it's the ones generally at the end of the run. And we've tried to um, have them balanced and mucked about with them and it doesn't really seem to fix the issue. And your system is comprised of a new boiler. So what was the old kilowattage of the boiler? So so we had a, an Evo Ideal boiler. We replaced it with a, a, uh, a Bosch which is a uh, 27 kilowatt. Okay. We also had a new pump put in, uh, which hasn't really made that much of a difference. We've had a couple of other people come visit, uh, muck about with it. They think they fixed it, but then when the heating goes off and then comes back on again, it's sort of back to, back to square, square one. Yeah, yeah, so it's been a bit frustrating. And then um, when it comes to control on each radiator, you've just got standard TRVs. Um, and you did say something about self-balancing yeah, they, they, so we got the TRVs, um, but I was told that the, the, the valves, so the lock key valves, is it, on the other side, yeah. are, you know, they're, they're designed to be kind of self-balancing. Okay. Um, not quite sure how that works, but uh, yeah. I, I just I'm, kind of I'm, take It's a bit of a talk, weird one, except, that is. Except it, you know, but uh, okay. it, yeah, it could be nonsense. All right, so this is the sort of call out plumber's laugh, because it's one of those ones where... <laughs> I say that now, but it can't really get any worse, can it? So I'll go around now. Adam, thanks ever so much for letting us film for a start and also for a lovely cup of coffee. Not at all. He's also got a guitar as well, so we might even have a little play of the guitar later. But we're going to go around now and we're going to just see what's going on. So join me while we do that. Look at that, Max. Taking these off. Every plumber's dream today, just so you know. Brand new floors. <laughs> the sort of thing that fills my heart with glee. <laughs> Right, so the system we've got in here is what's called an S-Plan system. So we use two port valves um, with the switch live going back to the boiler and the pump to divert flow to different components within the heating system. Um, generally, in most homes, you'd find you've only got two two port valves, one for the heating and one for the hot water. But on this system here, we've got a few different zones, which is a good thing. That means that we, we can isolate and control things a lot more closely. So zone number one is the hot water one. So that's this two port valve here lovingly marked with hot water. And just another little tip for you, if the two port valve's got a little dimple on top of it like that, it means you can change the head of the two port valve without having to drain the whole system down. Usually, <laughs> usually. Um, then we've got the first floor zone, that's upstairs radiators. Ground floor zone, just down there. And this one here, which supplies the flow to the underfloor heating manifold that's gonna go downstairs. Just a, another quick thing as well, it's a pressurized system. So that means we've got this pressure vessel here and at the moment the pressure is just above one bar which for a warm system is pretty much fine. Um, what you don't want to see when you come to that is nothing. <laughs> you want to see some sort of pressure in there. Um, at least then you know that we haven't got any leaks or anything like that. Um, and then obviously we've got a mega flow on here and as far as we know Adam hot water is hot water's fine isn't it? It comes out nice and hot. Okay let's go and have a quick look at the boiler. So then boiler new Worcester. Look at this little baby. So here's the boiler, new Worcester. So we've got a Green Star 27 kilowatt compact ERP. At the top there, we've got a magnetic filter, which I will quite like to <laughs> basically get cleared out. Sometimes though, you find the valves on them aren't, just don't work very well and they've been left like that. And you can be left with a bit of a nightmare on your hands. First thing, I'm just gonna probably just pop that just to there on that. Um, and that's where I'm going to leave that for now. So it's just a new board that's been installed and we've got a flow and return out of that in 28 mil. 
the first place that should go, the flow, is over to that airing cupboard where we've just been. But when you come to a house, you have no idea what people have done under floorboards. And particularly in a house where all the floor is like lovely and brand new, it's not really an option to be able to pull that up and find out what's going on. So what we're gonna do first, we've got oh, one of these lovely old controllers. We're going to boost the heating on the ground floor. Um, so we've got heating one and heating two just down here on there, but both off. Um, so we're just gonna boost this one here first. So that's on until 11.20. Now we'll pop up and we'll see which one of those two port valves has levered open. And what we'll also do to make it come on is turn up the room thermostat on the ground floor, which is somewhere around, probably in the hallway. I can smell it out. Here it is, there we go. Right, so we're gonna switch that right up. If you wanna know if this is working well, hear that clicking? And a lot of people change those over now because of the lag that's in them. They have a thing called an on and off lag, which on one of them is about five degrees. So it will pump up to say 22 degrees and it takes till it gets back down to 18 to come on again, roughly. Let's pop upstairs in the airing cupboard and see what's coming on. It's November, it's three degrees outside. Why would you not be wearing shorts in this weather? Like I said to Emily before I came out, legs don't feel the cold. So what I'm just gonna feel for here, I just wanna see how hot we get. That is very low speed on there. A few little things. I'm already getting a snifter for what, what this could be, but. So let's say whoever installed this, right, did exactly the right thing. And the flow from that boiler in 28 mil comes up this pipe here. Okay, this is our flow pipe, okay? Probably what there used to be was a uh, airing cupboard in the loft, so it depends how, when this was installed or if it's been changed over, but whatever happens, this is a high point in the, in the loop. And that's why we've got an automatic air vent on here, Flamco one. And that goes down through this pump and then is pumped and split off to the different components of the system according to the time clock, the thermostat, and then also then that they'll tell which one of these should be open. Currently, we've only got one thing open because we boosted one thing and we've only turned up the stat on the ground floor. Now, it says here that the first floor is open and the ground floor is closed. So what have we done? We've proved that boost number one relates to just the first floor, and it's probably open because our stat that's up here is probably calling, and it is. I'm just gonna leave that like that for now, okay? The airing cupboard is often the place where you get problems with flow that aren't related directly to the radiators being balanced properly or not, and I'll show you what those places are. First things first, we've got a valve here. So we've got water that comes up here, right? And it's teed off. So we could either go off to the radiators upstairs, off to the radiators downstairs, off to the underfloor heating, or this pipe here is off to the hot water, but there's a balancing valve here. This will always be slightly open and will spill water directly back to the boiler. If that is not set properly, the flow to the radiators will be very, very badly affected. Okay, so it needs to be set properly. The way to set these properly, and I'll do it in a minute because I've got a feeling that's probably slightly too open, um, is to wind them right down and literally just have a trickle going back to the boiler. They want that because it helps boilers when it comes to them being condensing boilers. You want a little bit of that warmth going back. And also it's a very nice safety uh, thing to have just in case one of these two port valves closes and doesn't signal to the boiler that it's gone off. This might be a bit complicated, but that will spill a bit of water back to it and prevent the boiler from overheating, creating steam, and there being like loads of concurrent issues with that. But let's just say about a, new, a few other little things here. This, this is set quite low. It's actually a variable pump. So what I might do is I'll, I'll just go online and just drag up the instructions for this. Uh, and we might set this to be uh, on the variable side, or we might just increase the pump speed a little bit just to see if that gets that going. There's one other thing, right, that we might have to physically do. And I don't think we're gonna have to do this on this system. Some people will put a brand new pump in, which is actually what one of the other installers came and did, or one of the other plumbers did in the last sort of 12 months to try and get the system to work properly. They put a new valve in. When they did that, they didn't drain the system out, which is normal, but it does prove to me that they never checked whether these valves here were furred up and they can, because the pump is like a magnetic field and we've got metal coming from the insides of the radiators, those metal particles can actually get attracted to the surfaces inside these valves. And in the end, you should have a hole about this big, but I've seen the holes like that big before and just think that's the heart of the system. And if that's being strangled down that far, it's gonna affect the flow 
everywhere else. But what we're trying to do now is just get something going on the first floor and making sure that the boiler is actually giving out the heat that we need to distribute to all the radiators. Yeah, I've got my light, but <laughs> look at what I've got on my feet. Beautiful pair of boots. These beasts from Big Boots, you can get them with 10% off using the links below and they are very, very comfortable. Muy bien. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to turn absolutely everything on possible. So every thermostat turned up, every radiator fully open. Uh, we're gonna turn the hot water on. We're gonna turn the underfloor heating on. We're gonna get everything going, here we go. Right, we're going back up to the airing cupboard and we're gonna find out now. In a few minutes time, we're just gonna wait and see how hot the water is coming to the airing cupboard. We've got my lovely Bosch GTC 400C, otherwise known as the Predator, because it does the, it looks, you know. If you haven't seen the Predator, probably don't watch the rest of this video. Right, so we're just gonna wait for this to heat up. So our flow pipe is that one up there. So we're getting some nice, decent bit of heat up here now, 45 degrees. It's only been running a few minutes. six everything's on six at the moment that's a bit of an indication for a problem if everything's on six on the trvs it means that they're they're not saving them any money they're not shutting down when other rooms are up to temperature and warm enough um so yeah that'll be something we're gonna be doing in a minute to get this to run correctly complete diy manual should be by the toilet so we're doing the first sort of kind of full run up of the whole system this one's stone cold. That's on three. Probably because it's warm enough in here. It's warm though, isn't it? I mean, you say it feels free. I mean, you can sort of test room temperature in here. Just point out a wall. So look, we're at 22.5 on the wall. Not bad. So it's getting warm, it's taking its time. That's what we've got in this one here. And apparently the one over the other side of the room isn't anywhere near that. Look at that, hardly anything on that one. That says to me that that one's pinching heat. It's pinching flow. It's gonna take a while, but we need to do the basics first. So Max in here, Max and our lovely viewers, this is all under full heating in here. You can feel it. Can you feel that on your feet, Max? So look at that. So it's coming through there, 25 degrees on the floor. And look, the difference there, look, can you see the difference there between underfloor heating here and non-underfloor heating? You see that? That is the difference between that threshold there. So there's no radiators in here. We've just got the water flying around on a coil underneath the floor that's controlled by the um, manifold in the airing cupboard. But everything's getting hot now. We're just gonna wait a few minutes to let the system just run for a while. Then we'll go around, we'll set each radiator to the right TRV level, but also we'll just check the balancing on each radiator. And there's a couple of things we're gonna do in the airing cupboard as well, to the pump and also the spill return valve as well. Can't remember the name of it now. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments, you lovely people. Um, and then we'll see how we're running then as well. So that, that radiator now is getting flow. You know, you've got other radiators in the house that are baking hot already, and this one is just, just getting a trickle. I mean, the thing is, right, you can see it on here really well because this thermal camera is designed to do that. But if you felt it, you can't feel any heat in that rad at all. That's because the hottest part of it is 23 degrees, when it should be 60. So we've got a few minutes. Adam's gonna let me play his guitar. <laughs> There we go, done. It's Thank tuned, you. Yeah, it's tuned. You know, I was in Costco a few days ago in Stevenage and there's all these guitars in there that are being bought by, you know, like kids' first guitars. My wife is off shopping and I just spent half an hour in there just tuning all their guitars for her. <laughs> there you go. So the first thing we can do is set the TRV level to the room temperature we want in this room, which is generally 21 to 22 degrees. Six, the level of six on the Honeywell radiator valve, and I'll just very quickly show you one. So that's six, okay. Um, I think on these, five is gonna be about 25, 26, 27 degrees. This, and then there's this button here because you don't really wanna be that much further open. Now, as the room gets warmer, this starts to act on a pin on the radiator valve and slow the flow of hot water going down into the radiator. That's why these do not sense the temperature of the radiator, they sense the temperature in the room. So this number relates to room temperature, not how hot the radiator is. So if you go into a room and it's cold, you feel the radiator's hot, don't turn this up. The radiator knows the room is cold and it's trying to heat the room up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this one to probably, I'm gonna set it to just there. The best way to do it is to open them first, screw them back on and then wind them down to where you want them. Then we'll just pop to the other end 
quickly balance this radiator and then we're done in this room. Right, so the system's been going for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. So look, this radiator here is almost at 60 degrees. That is perfect. And look how, look at the whole covering it's got as well of heat on the radiator. It proves, especially on the ground floor, that we have radiators that don't have any sludge in them, which is a very good sign. That radiator there is roasting hot as well. It's just like I said, the ones on the extremities of the system. So this one here, look, 30, 39, 40 degrees. That's it's 10 degrees cooler than the radiator that's just over there. So this one here is 57 degrees, this radiator, and that one over there, 30 degrees. So what we're gonna do, every radiator that is in a room that doesn't share a room with this, okay? So that radiator we're actually gonna leave on six because that's in the same room as the thermostat. And the reason we do that is if that radiator goes down, the thermostat might not mean the, might not think the room's hot enough and it won't shut the heating off. All you need to know, people, is if it's in a room with that, you leave that turned up. But one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna balance this one out now. So when we balance the heating system out, what we're doing is we are setting from a plumber's perspective on a valve that people can't play around with, okay? So these valves here, people can play around with. They've got numbers, they can twiddle them. These ones under here are under a little plastic cap and they're a little bit more, you know, oh, what's that do? Ooh. Well, it balances the radiator. So we've got one point of heat, one pump, and we've got 10 radiators. The radiator nearest to that point of heat and that pump is gonna be the one that takes all the flow. Water will always take the easiest course. It will go through that first radiator and back to the boiler, and that cycle will just continue. So what we try and do is we try and force the water to go to the other radiators by balancing down the flow to that rad. Some people might go, well, that's gonna make that radiator cooler. It won't, it will just mean that it warms up slightly slower than it used to. So we're just gonna do that on this one here now, and just as typical, as soon as I did it, the valve just started to leak. So look, I've shut this, so this radiator is now shut off. So what we do to balance it is we just open it a quarter of a turn. To know what a quarter is, we don't have to look at this, we just look at the handle of our, of our adjustable spanner. So I, or I could just have it like this actually, I look at the handle. So to be quarter of a turn, I need the handle to be there. That's it, that should now be balanced. The thing, the reason this takes a little bit of time is because you need to know whether the work you've done, if you've balanced this too much, the radiator will go cold. So if that's the case, you just give it literally five millimeters more open, just a little crack open. Uh, and sometimes as well, you find that when you've moved it, the valve leaks a little bit, but that's just on the gland, so no big deal. When it comes to towel radiators like this one here, you're best off actually leaving this open because you kind of want your towels to be nice and dried out and warm all the time, but you still are going to have to balance it out. So this radiator here is incredibly hot. So that's there. They basically just open them up too far and that is now balanced. And what we'll do, we'll go around later on and just make sure they're all still getting really, really hot still. And if they stay really hot, we know we've got it balanced to the right place. These can be a little bit more difficult to balance because just because it's a different valve type, we're just going to open it like that. So far, we've done nothing to the pump speed. We're just trying to distribute what we've got. I mean, this is roasting hot, this radiator. And look, because there's a little leak here, I think whoever did these last time got a bit worried that they kept leaking. This one's fully open. Look at it. I think what's happened here is when someone came to balance these radiators, they moved the one on the top of the stairs first and that leaked on the gland and it must have made them think, oh God, they're all gonna leak. And they didn't want to touch any more of them. But all it takes is just nipping the gland up and then that's fixed. <laughs> I'll tell you what, one thing you're gonna learn here today, when you go round to a job where other plumbers have been loads and loads of times before, don't slag off plumbers who were here before. The install here is quite a good install. You look in the airing cupboard, it's very neat. They probably just worked on it for such a long time they just lost their head and they just forgot, or, or you know, maybe they were having trouble or something like that, but there's no point, there's nothing's gained by going, oh, the guy who was here before you was absolutely crap, because they weren't, you can tell. It's just one of those things, just say, look, I've done this, I found that a few of the radiators weren't balanced, and I think I fixed the problem. That touch the radio, back of your hand. That's, that's hot, isn't it? Look at it, it's fully open. <laughs> and also, we're upstairs. I mean, these radiators are the ones that you balance first because obviously heat rises. So, you know, I don't want to slag off who was here, but <laughs> what the hell were they doing? That's now balanced. And we know it will be in 20 minutes when it's still hot. Come on. Firstly, this is the one we balance first, so it should still be really hot. Feel that, Max? Tell me if that's hot. 
That's not cooling off at all, is it? Yeah. I'm just gonna balance the rest of the radiators, guys, and then we're gonna leave the system to run for 30 minutes so we know that all the balancing that we've done is correct and we haven't cooled down the radiators too much before we then go and look at the problem radiators and see how they're getting on. Now, a major draw of flow on any system is the coil of the hot water tank, which is not even open at the moment. So if we open this up, we're gonna then draw water from the boiler, okay, through a 22 mil pipe that really needs hardly anything to go through it. That's why we use this valve here. This is a strangulation valve. So as we have water go through the, from the boiler, through our coil, and then back to the boiler again, the more water that comes through here and out of there, the less water we've got going around the radiators. I'm gonna hope that this is half open or something like that. Really, it needs to be open one or two turns, but let's see. <laughs> it's not even shut. Sometimes a good way of actually getting these, to, so you know there's flow going through them, is put something like that on there and then put your ear on this. And you can actually hear the water wisping through it as you open it up. So that's me closing it, yeah? And then as I open it, you'll hear it start whispering and hissing. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear that. <laughs> but this is the bypass valve. Now usually, back in the day, a bypass valve was actually one of these that you just pretty much strangled shut. But now they just have a setting on them. But this one, oh, <laughs> that's not great, is it? This one's not very happy. Ah, there we go. Right then guys, we've had the system running for about 35 minutes now after we've balanced the system. Every radiator valve is fully open. The coil to the hot water system's open. The underfloor heating is on. We've now made sure that everything in this house is hot. Only now will I go around and set the TRVs to the settings that I think they should be at, which in general is three in all the rooms that don't share a space with the room thermostat. For, so for example, we've got our room thermostat here on this wall. So that means that's gonna stay on level six and the one over there, which is in the same space, is gonna stay on level six as well. But every other room needs to go on to what I'd say is about three. So three, well, I'm gonna set them to three in a bit. This one wasn't getting hot at all earlier. Look at that, it's at 53 already and every other radiator is roasting hot. And just make sure the collar's on there nicely as well. It's all good. The other reason we go around and do this after we've done the balancing and that we've waited for a long time is it gives us the opportunity to go to each radiator when it's fully open and has been balanced for half an hour or so to make sure that it's still getting roasting hot. This one is baking hot. So we're gonna turn this one down now to 3.1, which is just there behind that lovely blob of paint. And what that'll do, it'll sense the room temperature and it will start to shut down and it'll get happier and happier. 58 degrees at the top. So we know this one's getting warm, it's been balanced. So we're now gonna run that down to three in a bit. And that's it, well, to be honest, I'm gonna set this at three. All the upstairs ones I'm setting on three because I'm evil. That one's just cooling off now, 58. Ooh, baby. This one here, 58, but we're leaving that one open. And then what you wanna do is shut the doors. So then each room is its own zone. Then we're gonna set this, let's just wait for that click, see if you can hear the click. So, I mean, thermostat's knocking off. Let's go downstairs and see how that radio is doing. The one that never got hot and the reason that we were called out to this house in the first place. So Adam, it's been probably an hour now. Everything's balanced, everything's on. Underfloor heating's on, hot water's on, every radiator is on. So the problem radiators were that one through there and that one through there. Yep. Uh, and I've gone around and made sure that every radiator, radiator is hot. Currently I've actually turned this radiator off because I just want to prove it's flow in a minute. But the one that was a real problem is this one over here. So I want you to feel that on camera. Now hopefully he's gonna go, oh my God, it's so much warmer. Well, I'm feel the you walking into the room. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely taken the, uh, the edge off it. And that's, all, that's, that's hot, that's probably hot. Good, right, so everything's on. Now, earlier on you said the valves, the TRVs are self-balancing. Yes, that's what I was told. You were cor told the correct information. Okay. That, was, that was true. Yeah. But they're not automatic, they have to be set. And they weren't set. Uh, and generally, I wouldn't use them anyway, just use the lock shields. It's one of those things that people have invented and you know, sometimes you don't 100% need. Unless you're using a, da a Danfoss one because they're quite good. But, um, but yeah, everything is set now. Uh, one thing I would say is the, um, the radiators that are in rooms that do not share a room with the thermostat, leave them on three 
all the room, the ones with the rooms with the thermostats are on six, so they're flat out. The reason for that is we want the thermostat to get an accurate representation of the maximum output from the boiler, okay? That'll the, be 14,000 pounds, please. Wow, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> worth every penny. Yeah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> We've actually brought the camper van with us and we're gonna stay overnight out of the front. <laughs> No, I'm going to stay for another hour or two. We're just going to make sure that it's working oh, that's properly. That's great. Um, and then I'm going to change a kitchen tap at my house, which you're also going to film. So if you're not subscribed, perhaps subscribe now. And if you aren't going to subscribe, sling your hook. Don't need to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the little tip I said at the top of the video that you don't want to miss. If you've got every radiator balanced, everything's hot, but you found that one radiator still will just not even get anywhere near hot at all, it's stone cold, sometimes you'll find it's the TRV pin within the TRV. So this can sometimes be stuck down. This is actually open, I can tell you that now. But what you want to do is grab it with a set of grips and just give it a good wobble. And then once that's opened up, a little spray of WD-40, something like that, and that will sort it out. Lovely. Pop the thing back on, making sure that the notch faces the user so they know what's going on. There's the notch. And because this is a towel rail, I'm going to leave it on six. But usually, you'd strangle it down to three and see over a few days how warm the room got. All done. Hi, this is a message for Adam's wife. Hopefully you're happy that we've got all your radiators going. Just so you know, when you're in your bedroom, set your radiators to three. And if you find that's too cold for you over a few days, don't whack it all the way up to six. Don't do that. Just go from three to three and a bit and up in increments until you're happy.